Welcome to lesson 116 of Saxon Maths Course 2. This is going to be a brand new lesson for everyone, so sit down and strap yourself in. We're going to deal with slope-intercept form of uh, linear equations. We're going to write those equations in slope-intercept form, what's called slope-intercept form. We're also going to determine the slope of the y-intercept from an equation written in that slope intercept form and we're going to graph linear equations using the slope and the y-intercept so let's go ahead and get this done let's do it uh, it's really simple once you get the the concept down so let's practice a little bit together all right so first of all let's talk about slope intercept form itself it's written as y equals mx plus b the the m is equal to the slope and the y or the b is equal to the y-intercept. So when you look at y equals 2x plus 3, the 2 means that the slope is 2, and the 3 means that it crosses over at positive 3 or, on, or, or th positive 3 on the y-intercept. If it was minus 3, then it would be negative 3 on the y-intercept. So if you look down here, see this 3 right here? See where it crosses, right? That, in this case here, it crosses on the 4 instead of the 3 because it's talking about the y-intercept being 4 on this one here. But on, right, 3 would be where it would cross over for this problem up here. So y-intercept is the point at which it crosses over. So if I was to come down here and go like this, the y-intercept would be negative 3. If I was to go like this, the y-intercept would be 0, which you typically won't see. But it's where it crosses the y-intercept. That's the y-intercept. Okay, so let's look at this. Here's three equations, 2x plus y minus 4 equals 0, and 2x plus y equals 4, and y equals negative 2x plus 4. All three of those say the exact same thing. They all have the same slope right here. They're just written in different, in different orders. It's kind of like sometimes you see 3x plus 2 equals something, right? And then other times you'll see 2 plus 3x equals something, or you'll see... The something over here equals 3x plus, it just looks different, but really it's, they all have the same answers. And it's the same thing with these. Okay, but if you, this is the one I really want you to look at is right here, because that, well, that is in slope-intercept form. So let's focus in on that one a little bit more. Okay, so here y equals negative 2x plus 4. So the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is 4. So let's go back to that. Y-intercept is where it crosses the Y. Did it cross at the 4? Yeah, it did. And then if you and you rise over run, your slope is rise over run. Okay? So that's got to be negative 2 over 1. And we know that it's negative because it's a negative slope. So let's see if it is 2. Yep, 1, 2, over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2. Right? And each time we do that, so we know that it's negative 2. So let's continue. All right, so... The way they write that is this. Slope-intercept form is written y equals mx plus b. mx plus b. And the m stands for the slope and the b stands for the y-intercept. So let's see if we can do this on a couple of these. On this first one, all I want you to do is I want you to turn it into the y-intercept or the slope-intercept form. So you need to have, it needs to start with y equals. And then what would it be? Can you do that for me? Go ahead and pause the video. This is pretty simple. Don't think too hard. The, the y is already on the, on, on the left side of the equal sign, so what, which one, what do you need to do? You need to move what? Yeah, you need to move that 3x. And is that a positive 3x or a negative 3x? That's a positive 3x. So to get rid of it, you're going to have to do minus 3x to each side, aren't you? Okay, so now it goes away. Now you have minus 3x plus 6. And now you're in slope-intercept form. All right? That would be your answer. If it asked you to put it in slope-intercept form, that would be your answer. You can't simplify that anymore. You don't know what the x is. You don't know what the y is. You can't do it. That's as far as you go. Okay? Hopefully, that, hopefully you're okay with that. Let's do it again. So let's see if you can actually do it and graph it. So this one here, it's already in, in y-intercept form. Uh, y equals negative 3x plus 6 using the slope and y-intercept. So plus 6. So where is the line going to cross the y-axis? That's right. It's going to cross it right here at the positive 6. Okay, so we can go ahead and mark that. We know that. Now, 
three negative three x. We know that that's going to be our slope is going to be negative three. So if it's a negative, is our line going to go like this or is it going to go like this? It's negative. Remember, it's negative. So our line's going to our line's going to look like this. So we're going to start right here, and we've got to go. Our rise has to be three. So and over one, right? Because this is three over one. So I'm going to go down one, two, three, and over. Put a dot. Down one, two, three, and over. Put a dot. Down one, two, three, and over. Put a dot. Now I could take and I can just draw my line. And you can see that that is a negative slope. And it crosses at the six inner. So this, this is the slope. This is the, the line for this equation right here. Y equals negative 3x plus 6. Now sometimes they'll go over and down 3, over and down 3, over and down 3. Whichever way you want is fine, just so you keep them straight and you know that it's a negative slope. Let's see how they did it. Okay, so let me get that out of your way so you can see it. Okay, so they went over and down 3, over and down 3, over and down 3. Same thing, but you see that's the slope, that, that's the line that we got. So when we graph the equation, that's what it looks like. All right, let's try it again. Using only the slope and y-intercept graph, y equals x minus 2. I'm going to give you one hint here. There's a 1 in front of that x, right? You can always assume that. Okay, so go ahead and see if you can do this, and then restart the video. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I got my y-intercept, and it tells me it's at negative 2. Minus 2 is negative 2, so I know it's going to cross over right there at negative 2. Now, I've got a 1x, so rise over, rise over runs, will be 1 over 1. So I can go, I can go up 1, let's see if I can do this, I go up 1 and over 1, 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 up 1 and over 1. So I got a dot here, a dot here, dot here, dot here, and dot here. So I can go just like this. That's going to be my line. That's not a very good line, is it? It should go right through there. There we go. And I'm straight. Okay. So that's what you should have gotten. Hopefully you graphed the same thing. Came up with the same answer. And there it is. Let me erase it again so you can see it a little better. All right. Again, up over up. Rise over run. Rise over run. Rise over run. All right. And because, because this was a positive x, we knew that our slope would go this way. If it had been minus x, we know it would have been this way. All right? Okay, so now let's put it into a word problem. We know how much we love word problems, right? They really they stretch us to think. So Robert noticed a bird's nest in a line with the slope of his roof. He knew that the slope of the roof was 4 and 12. He also knew that the edge of the roof was 8 feet high. So in this case here, we've got a rise of 4 and a run of 12. And he's already starting 8 feet in the air. So he measures 48 feet from the edge. So he measures here, he goes 48 feet to the to where the nest's at. And then he wants to calculate how high the nest is. So the way you could do that is you can do that by creating a, a table here. And if you start right here at zero, ground zero, right? There's no run yet. You're right here, right here. When you're right there, you're how high up? You're you're eight, you're eight feet high. So this one right here is when you're right there, right where the guy's head is. Okay, now your next step is you're going to go over 12, right? And when you go over 12, you're going to go up 4. So that's going to put you at 12 feet high. And you go over four, 12 and up 4. And that's going to put you over 24 and up to 16. Over 12, up 4. You're going to be at 36 and 20. Over 12 and up 4. So at 48 feet, that nest is 24 feet in the air. That's how you could figure it out doing a using a table. Another another way of doing that is that you could take, and I think it shows you on the next slide, you could take and you can do rise over run. 4 to 12, right? Do you rise over run? And then times it by 48, right? And then go from there. So you got rise over run plus your 8. So go back here, go back here. Plus our, plus our 8 is that we're, we're already 8 feet off the ground. So equals y. There's our, there's, our, there's our formula. Okay, so here it is. y equals 412x plus 8. We multiply that out, we get the same 24, which is a lot faster, I think, than 
than doing the table. But the table, I, I like the table in the sense that I get to see it and, and see the movement as I go, and I know I'm not making a mistake. It just takes a little while to, to calculate each one of these. All right? So we can also graph the equation of y equals 4 twelfth x plus 8 in the first quadrant and find the height where x is at 48. We could, we could do it that way also. All right, we could, you know, over 4, up, over 12, up 4, over 12, up 4, over 12, up 4. All right, we could do that here. We're going, we're going over 12, up 4, over 12, up 4, over 12, up 4, over 12, up 4. So we get right here, and then we come down here, and we see it's at 48. So we could have done it that way also. So there's three ways you could do it, whichever works best for you. I really like using the slope-intercept form. And, of course, that's why we're having this lesson, right? Okay, so that's it. I know that's a lot together. It's going to take a lot of practice before you get that down. I don't expect you to be pros at it. Uh, do your best. Here's your, here's your TIDs. Please do those. Submit them to me tonight electronically. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, take a minute. Watch the video again if you've got time. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.